In today's video, we're asking the question of what is the difference between British Airways European business class and economy? And should you bother? Hi, this is Alex from Lift Up and Travel. I'm here today with Brent. Hello. Yeah, hi. <laughs> uh, I'm basically on the way towards Gatwick. I'm flying with British Airways towards Shorin. Today's flight from London Gatwick to Turin will take about 1 hour and 50 minutes, covering a distance of 555 miles. Besides having one of our favourite lounges which has complimentary and delicious burgers, yum, we only paid £2 for today's flight, but more on that in a bit. First thing that's really good is because the train arrives in the south terminal, that's where B is, so no flapping around, love it. As you can see, British Airways is one of the more generous airlines when it comes to carry-on baggage allowance, so there's no need to check in for today's flight. Just don't be the last one on the plane if you're intending to take a suitcase. While economy slum it to the right, we can use the fast track queue because we're flying in business class. As a result, immigration took no time at all. The second benefit of flying in business class is getting access to the lounge. I have British Airways Gold status, so I can use the first class lounge as well. We'll tour both before enjoying that sweet, sweet burger. If you've had the opportunity to try the business class lounge at Heathrow, the lounge at Gatwa has a much more relaxed vibe. This could be because it has plenty of seating, but it's divided into different areas by the structure of the building. Even better, if you so wish, you can take the stairs up to the balcony level. If like me and Brent, you enjoy watching planes, then you'll love this lounge. Because of the position, it has views of both the south and the north terminal. As for the food, it's pretty similar to the offering in the first class. Whilst the first lounge has a delicious burger, the business class has scones, jam, cream, and steak and ale pies. The selection's pretty good, and while I'm not a chef, I always find something to eat. One of the best parts of traveling and being in business class is the use of the lounges and where available, the opportunity to shower before your flight. And the shower rooms at Gatwick are really rather nice. So as showers go, this definitely troubles the Heathrow ones, which remind me of kind of like a hospital toilet. There's nothing like a rainfall shower, and the amenities are provided by Elemis, which are very refreshing. So if you've enjoyed the tour of the business class, it's back to the first. Unlike the previous time, some years ago, the lounge is quite busy today. Good to see British Airways filling those seats after the pandemic. And we've managed to get ourselves some great seats next to the window, which have views of all the park planes and the runway. This is a great lounge, and that's partly because of the lack of Concorde Lounge. Unlike Heathrow, which is only reserved for those travelling first class, the first lounge here is, as a result, a slight hybrid offering a better service and that delicious burger I'll be having very shortly. The one thing you can normally count on is that British Airways lounges and flights have a really well-stocked selection of alcoholic beverages and soft drinks. Let's start things off with a glass of wine. And opposite, Brent's been waiting very patiently for his burger. Do you think he'll share his chip? How's the burger? Mm. I'll take that as a no then. And shortly after, mine arrives as well. What a good looking burger. Had a lot of chips in my time and these were really good. Mm. Mm. If you don't have time to sit around and wait for the burger, although it's only 10 minutes, there are plenty of other options. They usually have cake and today's no exception with chocolate cake and lemon drizzle. As always, the saddest and most exciting part is leaving the lounge because it means we're going to board a plane. Always fun for us. We will have a very, very quick tour over the airport to see what's available if you're flying economy. I hear the North Terminal isn't quite as good, but that's okay, because this is the South. There are plenty of restaurants and seats and this nice little mezzanine area in the middle. There's also three third-party lounges to choose from, but pre-booked because they get really busy. While checking the gate, I've spotted the Lego shop, but specifically, I can see what everybody's talking about online. It's Lego's latest product and it's a replica of Concord. This we have to see. So Brent's just literally wandered off. No idea where he is, but it's gate 15. Galway is quite long and there's always a lot of walking. It turns out Brent did tell me where he was going, but I was too engrossed with the model of Concord. Boarding is divided into boarding groups, and if you were flying business class or have one world emerald status like I do, it's group one. Besides getting comfortable when you see, this also means you get to choose where to put your bag, underneath or in the overhead lockers. I've seen someone before and it's quite tragic 
They had a small suitcase, but they struggled because they were the last one on the plane. It nearly got checked and tagged below the plane. Here's today's plane, an Airbus A320. And if you're flying with short haul with British Airways, you can guarantee it'll be an Airbus A319, A320 or A321, unless you're flying from London City. It doesn't matter where you sit, all the seats are the same, with a pitch of 31 inches, which is the distance from the seat in front to the back of yours, and a width of 17 and a half inches. Another benefit of having One World Emerald status is picking any seat from the day of purchase. One World Saffron, on the other hand, can do the same, except for row one and exit aisles. Unfortunately, without status, everybody else has to pay. Even in business class on this flight in January to Oslo, it costs between 21 and 27 pounds. That's a little insane. Even in economy, the back of the plane starts at 11 pounds, going up to 29 pounds for an exit row. You could avoid this by checking in less than 48 hours before departure, unless you have the hand baggage only fare, in which case you're at the mercy of British Airways seat allocation computer. Oh dear. Either way, these prices are not cheap. My seat on Wizz Air to Milan cost me £8 and was nowhere near the back. Sadly, there was no welcome drink on today's flight, but we'll go through the seat and all the functions and the food after the takeoff. The tapes are on your waist and tell them to kill you the double bow at the side. Noisy little engines, aren't they? Looking to the skies, you'll find the air nozzle and a reading light. And this nice looking magazine comes from the wall back pocket in front, which is a really good distance away. Food is complimentary in Club Europe. But in economy, the prices aren't dirt cheap, but are somewhat reasonable. Then again, £5 for noodles seems quite expensive. The leather covered seats are very comfortable. And I love the headrests because it doubles as something to rest your head on. It's also adjustable, so you can raise it or lower it depending on your height. For the return journey, we experienced economy from row 13, which is an exit row, so you can see how much of a difference it makes for your legs. If you're six foot or above like Brent, you may wish to consider that 29 pounds cost. If you know the reason why, let us know, but for some reason, the window shutter goes up, not down, on the exit row. And if you get lucky enough to have three seats to yourself, you'll be pleased to know the armrests go all the way up. Back at the front of the plane, I'm playing with this small table which only exists because this is an exit row seat. I've also been handed a tasty pack of assorted nuts and a cup of tea before the main course. Generally, it tends to be sandwiches in the afternoon and this is fine, although back in February of 2023, the bread used to be a little bit more varied. It was very tasty, it was a little bit like going around to grandma's after school. On the side, you get a wonderfully warm scone with clotted cream and jam and the dessert didn't disappoint. You can always count on the puddings. A tart with apricot, berries and a strawberry. Simple, but hit all the right spots. Everything was going really well until Brent discovered the previous occupant's meal under the table in the middle. These things happen, but after finding enough hair to make a wig on the Boeing 787 earlier in the year, you begin to wonder how truly clean are the seats. To access the Wi-Fi, all you need to do is select BA and then copy the web page into your browser. This is what you'll see, including the flight information, when you first open the page. You can even watch great shows like Halo, as provided by Paramount, over the Wi-Fi. The prices are reasonable, although some airlines now allow you to message for free. $4.99 sounds great, but is it really worth it for one hour? You decide. Bonus points and be really impressed to anyone who realised or knows the plane type you used in the previous clip. If you do, let us know in the comments below. And now, it's time to visit the bathroom. If you've watched our other videos, you'll know that the Airbus A320 is pretty uninspiring as a bathroom, unless you love your white and grey tones. The front bathroom does, however, come with the white company hand wash and cream, which is a really welcome surprise. Otherwise, it's a pretty average experience. As we begin to prepare for landing, the big question is for those not in the know, how do we pay £1 each? When you fly, you can sign up to receive flying miles, which can be redeemed against flights. The higher the cabin or the further distance, the more you get. Although sadly from October 2023, it will depend more on how much you paid than anything else. For one person to go one way on today's flight would have been 9,250 Avias in economy, or 15,000 in business. So for two people return, that's 48,500. However, we sweetened the deal by using a two for one voucher achieved on the British Airways American Express credit card that we couldn't have spent on anything else because we were Avias poor. 
Given that business class can be £200 one way, this was a pretty good deal. Obviously we appreciate not everyone has Avias just lying around, but the first can still be reasonable in sales or booked way in advance. Thank you, thank you. Cheers, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. And for today's conclusion, we're on the bus heading into town. So for today's conclusion, we're on the bus heading to town. Uh, pretty good flight, um, pretty standard for European business class travel. Um, the sandwiches probably looked a bit like the ones Grandma would make, but they were really tasty and the cake was good. Very high in carbs, um, obviously really good leg room, but that's because we're in the bulkhead seat in the front. Room. <laughs>